Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode. And now I have a level legendary marketer, um, brand advisor, startup advisor, advisor, and super talented uh, person. Um, you know, Bilal, thank you so much for being with the show. I think it's your first time being here on the show. Um, we did do a lot of different collabs together, um, but this is this this should be super interesting. I know so, I, I'm kind of insulted that you didn't include dashingly handsome in my in my introduction. I was about to. <laughs> I was about. What are you doing, bro? Good man. All all great. Uh, super excited to have you on. I have tons of questions to you. Uh, I wrote down so many questions here, uh, and usually uh, when I have questions to you, I want some. I want some of them to you. I'm answering about um, you know, uh, point. 0.2 seconds, <laughs> but now, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw them all right, right at ready to face and see what you have to say. So first of all, we kind of talked about it earlier, crazy times, you know, crazy times, the economy is kind of crazy. Uh, Silicon Valley bank, uh, the whole situation is kind of crazy. A lot of things are crazy, but I want us to focus work on like actionable tactics and marketing stuff that I think will be highly valuable to our to our audience. Um, my first question to you is this. What marketing philosophy do you disagree with? You say no no two words. Self promotion. Hmm. Interesting. That's just I mean, any company who sell who promotes themselves or any person that promotes themselves is not doing marketing. Maybe they're doing sales, maybe they're doing something else, but that is not marketing. So self-promotion in today's day and age, in my opinion, there's never any justification to outright shamelessly plug yourself or your company. Mm -hmm. What marketing philosophy do you agree with? Giving value? That's I, mean, I don't want to say that we're giving value because I feel like yeah. the word value has become like, it, it induces like me like throwing up already because so many people overuse that word. But uh, no, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I've learned time and time again that business is not a zero-sum game and that if you help others win in business and you don't play the short game, you play the long game, you focus on helping others win, you end up winning. Like in the most practical, tangible way. I'm not talking about karma. You just do, you do good for others. You demonstrate your abilities. You facilitate their success. You end up joining them on the road to success. Mm -hmm. Love it. Where, where is media headed? You know, where is, where is me ending? I, I feel like um, you, you probably know this much more than I do, right? And you've been, you've been in this game for such a long time. You know, when you started blogging, 10 years ago, you started blogging 15. What was it? 15. You started blogging 15 years ago. Blogging was like this new thing, right? There wasn't a lot of bloggers. Um, the, the SEO, like working on SEO was probably easier. There wasn't a lot of competition. And then I feel like once social media became to be like the main thing, you... You kind of became a social media uh, superstar. I'm trying to think of a more sophisticated word, but I'll take it. Just yeah, but take it. And you know when 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 it was really like writing political uh, you know publications when that was super important, you you dominated that as well. So you know writing for TechCrunch, Fast Company, Inc, and so many others. Um, what's next? Like, what's the next thing? Do you think is the thing to kind of focus on? I mean, listen, you know, I don't think it's going to come to as a surprise to anyone, but I think, you know, the market's definitely going towards video, whether it's short term video, short, uh, what's it called? Short form video or long form video, whether it's YouTube videos or TikTok videos, you know, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, right? We know that TikTok, you know, you people can belittle it and ridicule it all they want. They did the same thing for Twitter in the beginning. They did the same thing for Facebook in the beginning. So, you know, those, those that are ridiculing, you know, the new technologies, the new platforms out there are the ones that are going to lose, right? And we, we see this in history. Every time a new technology came out, you know, people freaked out and, and didn't embrace it. And then they ended up losing, right? I mean, literally from the tractor where the farmers freaked out and, the, and print where publishers freaked out and the internet and social media and the mobile phone. And it's, it's endless e-commerce. So, you know, the new quote unquote kid on the block is obviously TikTok and the numbers are insane. I mean, it's the, it's the most downloaded app in history. Uh, it's growing faster than Facebook ever dreamed of growing. And so, again, those that are ridiculing it as, oh, it's little girls dancing are the ones that are going to lose. And those that are embracing it are the ones that are going to win. And I, you know, I'm only getting started on TikTok, but I spend a ridiculous amount of hours consuming TikTok, uh, you know, videos and, and content. 
Uh, so videos in general, but you know, again, I think there's there's room for for long form, short form, but generally, I would say the answer when where is media going? Video. Interesting. There's there's two things I I I saw you started doing. So you started TikTok, and you also have this new thirty seconds, um, kind of uh, explainer videos, walking so Sapona, right? <laughs> Those was really good, high quality, super impressive. Um, what's kind of your goal with those? So, you know, it's a, it's a more general question. What's, what's my goal with content in general? What's anybody's yeah. goal with content? And so the answer is, you know, like you said, I started blogging 15 years ago. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a new thing. It wasn't a thing at all. Like when I started blogging, blogging was not a thing. Um, and it basically led to every single good thing that's happened to me in my career. Everything that has happened to me in my career directly connects back to that one day 15 years ago when I started blogging. So for me, you know, content is not a, it's not a business. I don't monetize my content at all ever, but it's basically, like I said, it's opened up an entire universe. So, you know, these short videos that I'm doing 30 second videos on how to grow your company, it's, it's the same concept. I mean, I'm not coming up with like, I'm not reinventing the wheel. These are all uh, tips that I've written about in the past on Inc and other things. And now I'm just, you know, I'm just giving it to people on a silver platter in 30 seconds. Um, and I don't have any particular business goal. I'm not like, oh, the, you know, it's going to convert and they're going to buy my, 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 I don't know, my online course. I'm not selling anything. So there's no specific kind of business uh, objective. But again, I think that, you know, it's reaching hundreds of thousands of people every time. So, you know, it's good for exposure. It's like you, you know, it definitely is valuable. So, I, you know, I just think good, good content leads to good things. I have, I, I have a tough question for you. Um, and this will push you a little bit. In a lot of interviews, you do many interviews. Um, in a lot of the interviews, people ask you, what's your end goal? And you usually say, like, you don't have an end goal. You're enjoying the moment. You're enjoying what you're currently doing. Um, and you even mentioned, let me know if, I'm, if I remember this correctly, you mentioned that someone came up to you and said, hey, Hila, let's, uh, probably a lot of that. He said, hey, Hila, let's open up a, a PC fund together. And you said, why should I manage... Why should I manage, you know, when, or other people's money? I'm really afraid what I'm doing right now, right? That's 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 what happened. Yeah. And 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 I want to push a little bit and ask you, like, I want to believe that that you don't have an end goal, but is that really the case? Like, do you like is there there isn't any like KPIs that you measure yourself towards? No goals, etc. It's only just waking up each day, producing the content, meeting new people. Is that really all it is? So a couple of things. First of all, if we're going to talk about an end game, I definitely will be owning a Ferrari one day. Okay, so that's one end game. Uh, second of all, um, I, I, I need to like crystallize and clarify a little bit, you know, what I said. It's not that I don't have an end game. This is my end game. Meaning, if I can continue to work and meet brilliant people and support my family and enjoy what I'm doing and not have any conflicts of interest, not have any. Uh, you know, need to justify myself to anyone. I can work with whomever I want, however I want, whenever I want. Why would there be any other end game other than this? You know, I'm enjoying every day, so this is my end game. Having said that, uh, I have recently kind of tweaked it a little bit and realized that at my core, I'm a content guy, right? My content manifested in the form of marketing, which is fine. I love marketing, but at my core, I'm not a marketing guy. I'm a content guy. So Really, I would love to double down on content. I would love to work. I'm now working with several Fortune 500s on content projects where they're getting high quality video content, interviews and things like that. They're giving me, you know, let's call it corporate money. And it's just literally a win-win. So I, I'd like to do more projects like that with larger companies that understand the value of content where I'll be producing that content for them, whether it's written, video, audio, whatever. Uh, they get what they want. I get what I want. So that's that's something if you can ask me like, Where's my career going? I, I believe that in five to 10 years from now, I'll be focusing less on marketing and taking money from startups and more on content that will help larger brands and larger companies, you know, uh, leverage, I'd say, you know, capitalize on all of these platforms to actually give real high quality content and not just to be on Facebook and be on Twitter to say they're on Twitter, but to actually give their audience and their followers something really valuable. So that's the end game, really. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It kind of reminds me of what Ryan Reynolds is doing. You saw what Ryan Reynolds is doing, the actor? Yeah, yeah. So he's stepping into these companies. He's he's becoming a business owner of these companies. He's doing incredible content campaigns for them, putting himself in the front, raising the value of the companies, then selling them. And, was, uh, and he's doing an amazing job. I think he's a genius. I, um, I have a question. 
you said something about, uh, well, you always have a potential to become an agent. Like, hurry up, please start doing like mass marketing, mass PR, those kind of stuff. Why did you stay away from that? Same reason. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. Why, like, again, why do I have to worry about payroll and work? Like, I'm, I have no desire, and I know this is going to sound funny, but I have zero, I have no desire to be a billionaire. I have no desire. I have a desire to support my family. I have a desire to have peace of mind. And I have a desire to go out with my wife when I want and go to a hotel when I want. But I don't have any desire to have billions of dollars in the bank. And if I did, then I'd probably scale my business. But I don't, you know, I, right now, I honestly, for the first time ever, I hired someone this, uh, this month to be my executive assistant to handle things that just are unnecessary for me to be doing like, you know, like generic emails and things. Someone who writes me an email for me to just write, thank you. You know, I don't need to do that. Or, you know, click like on a Facebook comment, let her do that. Uh, but other than hiring that, I've never hired anyone. And I, and I don't intend on it because again, like I'm having a good time. I, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I, I think I probably have a challenge of not being able to delegate effectively. I think like maybe I'm a perfectionist. Maybe I need to do things the way I do them. And I don't know that I trust many people to do the way, do the things that I do. But other than that, I just, it's, you know, my question of why I'm not scaling is why would I scale? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, it's really, it's actually really fascinating that you brought in an executive assistant. That's a really big step for you. Like it is very step for me. <laughs> it is. No, but I was saying, listen, 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 here's the thing, right? I, she shadowed me today. Like she was with me all day. So for, for, first of all, it was cool. Cause I met Don Ariely this morning and she's studying like his like behavioral whatever. And she was like, oh my God, Don Ariely. So she's having a good time. But, um. No, but listen, I mean, again, I'm not, she's not going to take over the things like when Mark Andreessen emails me, she's not going to reply to him. Like that's not, that's for me. I need to do that. Right. But scheduling, right. Someone sends me an email saying, Hey, oh, I'd love to talk to you. I'm looking for a job, blah, blah, blah. Now what happens? I go back and say, okay, you know, listen, I can't really spend too much time, but I'm happy to meet for half an hour or let's, you know, let's set up a zoom. They're like, oh, I'd really appreciate that. Fantastic. I'm like, okay, great. How's Monday morning, nine o'clock. Oh, I can't do Monday morning. This entire process took me 15 minutes completely unnecessarily like mm -hmm. why do let me give her to like i literally now all i do is someone wants to meet i reply to them i cc her her name is michal i said michal find us time and i just save myself 15 minutes times 30 a day so you know that or emailing or like you know i come back from a meeting um and i'm not checking my phone in my meetings so i come back and i have 35 emails and 400 facebook notifications out of which 98 percent of them are just like you know Oh, hey, well, I just wanted to let you know I really appreciated that article that you wrote. Like, just get it out of my inbox. I don't want to deal with that stuff, you know? So it's for me, yes, it is a big deal because I've never hired anyone before, but I, I, I'm pretty optimistic that this is going to change the game for me. It's been amazing. I, 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 that's actually taking me uh, to, a, to another set of questions that I prepared for you. And I think like, okay, this I just need to bring in some context for the audience, for the people who's going to listen to this. You are, by any measurement, an insanely productive human being, okay? Well, you're also a workaholic. Like, I, I, I know you work a lot. I know you say you don't work after five, but we do answer emails and stuff. It's work. You work, okay? You work all day long. But you do it at such a pace and such speed that is simply remarkable. And I have a few, a few questions. You told me once... And, and, tell, and tell me if that is not correct anymore, that you don't use any to-do list. Is that still... I don't, I don't use any software. I don't use any... So I literally do not. I don't use a CRM. I don't use task management. I use no software. I do it all manually. And again, it could be that I'm not being as efficient as I could be, but the way I work... And for me, it's it's been working. The way I work is as follows. If I, if I have a task, right? Someone says, okay, I need you to review this deck. So it's in my inbox, right? As a task. When I complete that task, I archive it. Now, as you know, I am completely OCD about inbox zero. So this is basically, an, it's, a, it's an integrated incentive for me to get stuff done because I want it out of my inbox. So my task management is my inbox. When I have a task, it's in my inbox. When I finish it, I archive it. And that is how I do task management, CRM. Like for me, you know, when I meet someone and I, whatever I post about them, like I don't need to stop what I'm doing to start adding them to my CR. Like it's just, to me, it seems counterintuitive to stop working to document my work. Like, just let me get it done. I don't want to start. Now, again, I'm, I'm fully, fully cognizant of the fact that I'm probably not fully optimizing my workflow, but I, I, I tell myself that the time that I would spend 
to do due diligence on different software platforms and different you know solutions to find the right one for me, that's time that I could have spent doing a thousand other things that would have both been more enjoyable, more fulfilling, and more lucrative, if I'm being honest. So I just, I, yeah, I just never did it. Hmm. And what if the project is more of a long-term project? What if you're, you know, you need to work- All my projects are long-term projects, man. Yeah, yeah. So how does this work? So it's not just review with that. What if you need to do an outreach to, let's say, 100 orders and track to answer and dive in and follow you up? So yeah, let's take that as an example. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm working with a company, uh, let's say in, in healthcare, and when I joined them, they got uh, FDA clearance and they wanted to get press like yesterday. And I was like, listen, I could do a campaign. Well, let's do it for like a month. Let's do it properly. Like, no, we need we need the press in six days. I was like, all right. So you know, I basically worked around the clock and I went publication by publication for many of which I write for. Um, those that I don't write for, I have very good relationships. So, so I, all right, so I pinged, you know, Forbes, I pinged Fast Company, I pinged Nasdaq.com, I pinged, and these are all buddies of mine. Now, that's the key of it because I write for these publications. So when I pitch them, I'm not a PR company, I'm their colleague, which I now capitalize on to do PR. So again, is there a more systematic way of doing it? Probably. It's For me, it's just, I just, again, I just want to get it done. And so I, I, I fully recognize that, you know, now I'm 44 years old. When I'm 50, when I'm 55, when I'm 60, you know, my brain's not going to be as sharp as it is now. And I probably am going to need a CRM. But for now, like, I just, I just know, you know, I need to get this done. Here's how I'm going to do it. And boom, let's just get it done. Um, a lot of people want uh, want your time. They pin you. They say, hey, let's speed, let's speed, let, let's speed. And you, and you meet a lot of those people. And uh, by the way, I don't know how you do that. Um, I really don't know how you do that. I meet so many people in such a short, short time. But what happens, like, so how do you manage, like, how do you manage your day? You know, do you, do you, like, time box everything? Like, how, do you, how does your assistant know, like, Bro, what? you're overthinking this, my friend. It's, I, I'm telling you, it's way simpler than this, all right? Someone emails me and they say, hey, hello, uh, I'd love to meet you. I then respond with one of my keyboard shortcuts and I say, give me some context. What do you want to meet about? You want to meet about introductions to investors? You want to meet about me covering you, writing about you? What do you want to meet, what do you want to meet about? They then say, okay, well, I need some introductions to investors. I'm like, great, we don't need to meet for that. Send me your deck, send me your list of investors. Anybody that I know, I'll send them your deck. Done, fine. I need you to write about me. Well, what do you do? Um, we've developed a cybersecurity, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, I don't write about cybersecurity. Onward, just to save myself. But if someone says, hey, I wanna meet you. I'm like, what do you wanna meet about? Um, I just made Aliyah and I need a job. I'm like, great, let's set up a Zoom. I'm happy to help. So I speak to them for 15 minutes. I didn't lose anything and I hopefully helped someone. Hey, Hill, I'd love to meet you. What do you wanna meet about? Uh, I need some marketing advice. Done. Let's meet. Half hour in Serona. I meet the guy or the girl, give them some advice. Everybody's happy. Nine out of 10 times. Well, I shouldn't say no, maybe seven out of 10 times. That meeting, which I quote unquote should not have taken, meaning it was illogical for me because there was nothing in it for me, yeah. ends up leading to amazing opportunities. So I, I obviously filter out who I'm meeting. And when it's irrelevant, I'm not going to waste my time or their time. But if it's someone that needs advice and I can help them, why not? And again, every single company that I'm working with, without exception, every single opportunity that I've had in my entire career came from me helping someone without asking for anything in return. And a traditional business person would have said to me, why are you meeting this person? It makes no sense. Don't waste your time. But I did. And it led to good things. So, you know, I, I just, I obviously meet people that are relevant, but I, tr I can't meet everyone. But if someone reaches out in a normal way, not spammy and not whatever, and they want to meet and I could help them, I'll try to meet them, you know, try. Mm -hmm. Simple. Uh, uh, simple and efficient. How, how do you manage client expectations? That's a good question. Um, how do I manage client expectations? So, you know, I, I, it, there are two types of clients, if I'm being honest, two types of clients. The first type of client is a client that reaches out to me and be like, hey, hello, I've been following you for 10 years. I love your work. I'm finally, yeah, you know, I'll give you an example. I'm working with a startup in uh, Singapore. And uh, the founder is a guy named Jay Lee. He's a really good friend of mine. We've been connected online for probably 15 years. Uh, he's an Asian guy from Korea. Um, and uh, we, we never met. We were connected on Twitter for literally 15 years. We never met. And, but, but like, I really would have considered, I do, I consider him a good friend, even though we never met. And about, I don't know, six, seven months ago, he reaches out to me out of the blue and he says, I've been waiting 15 years for this. I finally have my startup. You're joining me as an advisor. And so expectations don't need to be set because he knows what he's getting. And, you know, it's, it's aligned. I want to bring the maximum value that I could bring. He knows what I'm capable of. So he activates me and we're completely aligned. Then there are companies who reach out and say, you know, 
I heard about your work. I'd love to explore synergies. And then we meet and they're like, so what are you offering? And I'm like, bro, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I'm not selling anything. Like, what do you need? You know, they say, oh, we need PR. I said, go hire a PR agency. Uh, we need introductions to investors. Yeah, I'm not a finder. If you want an introduction, I'm happy to help you. But, but if they say we need someone to accompany us and literally just like build a growth strategy across, you know, PR, social content, business, fundraising, but we don't know what you're capable of. So then we have a meeting. I explain to them exactly what I do and what I do not do. I'm not running ads on the internet. I've never run an ad on the internet in my life, right? If, if there's a, a match, then I say, okay, here's how I work. Here's the retainer. Here's what you get. You know, the, the actual conditions and terms, if they're into it, say, okay, let's, you know, let's take it further. I say, I want you to put in writing exactly what your expectations are, right? And if your expectations are for me to, you know, I don't know, if a company says to me, for example, how many hours a week can you give us? then I know we're misaligned because I'm not selling time. My time is the last 15 years. Now I'm just leveraging the time that I spent to use my network to, you know, so we have to make sure we're aligned. That once we define that kind of the goals and the mission and everything like that, I say, okay, put it in writing. So there should be no misunderstanding. And if we're aligned after that, then let's rock and roll. Hmm. What, what kind of like personas are, what, like what types, what type of like people or influencers or, you know, or businessman that you look, you follow and you say, Hey, I love that style. I love how you manage business. I want to kind of copy some of those stuff. I mean, for me, the most inspiring, um, you know, characteristic is humility. Um, when I meet amazing people who are just uber humble, it blows my mind. It, I mean, it doesn't blow my mind anymore. Cause I've been, I've been seeing it for like 15 years that the, the greatest people out there are the most humble, you know, and the, the epitome of that is Steve Wozniak. I remember like Walking into this hotel, meeting Steve Wozniak, thinking to myself, holy crap, this guy invented the personal computer and he's coming down to the receptionist at, in his hotel with his bag of laundry. He's the founder of Apple. Like he could pay someone up $50,000 to come up to his hotel room and take his laundry, but he's not. And that humility carried on throughout the meeting. He's just super duper humble. And so the same is true of Mark Andreessen. Like Mark Andreessen, the guy who invented the web browser, the top venture capitalist in the world, you'd think you'd think that the guy has an ego the size of South America. Meanwhile, I, I was in Andreessen Horowitz's offices after I was already in touch with Mark and I interviewed him and whatever. I'm in the offices and I was meeting a different partner there. And as I'm leaving, a, a black you know black uh, window SUV pulls up. Mark Andreessen gets out and he's on the phone with an entrepreneur that is clearly in distress. Like you could tell he was like, he was talking to this entrepreneur about like whether to shut down the company or not, whatever. Like it was a very intense conversation. But the, I, like I had been speaking to the guy for years over email. I never met him. So there was no way I was not going to like interrupt his conversation and just like introduce myself. So I just like waved at him and I like held up my phone to show like a picture of me. Hello. Like it said, hello, fold. He literally, he said, hold on a second. He put the phone down. He's like, oh my, God. starts talking to me. Like I'm like, and this is Mark Andreessen. I'm like, this guy has no ego. Like why does he even give me the time of day? But that's the answer. The answer is these great leaders, these people who have done unbelievable things that truly change the world, they do it without ego. And generally speaking, when people have an ego, I find that they're trying to compensate for something. Ooh. Wow. Is Mark in treason? Uh, he's tall, right? He's a huge person. He's tall. And he has a he has an egg head. His head looks like an egg. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I Make him intro. <laughs> Just kidding. He's amazing, by the way. Just so you know, like I sent him tons and tons of uh, of deals, and he, I send him a deal, he immediately CCs his partners, and like he's just super. He's just a nice guy. Like he's just a nice guy. I don't know him personally, but through his interviews and stuff that I've watched closely, you guys have a really similar personality in terms of like how you talk, how you demonstrate. Things. Interesting. I'll take that. That's a big compliment. Yeah. Listen, the guy's a legend. He really is. And again, like you know what? I'm going to change my answer. I'm not even going to say humility. Forget humility. I'm going to actually, this is, this is, you actually just made me think about this. My answer is the characteristic that I appreciate most is just niceness. Like I, it's such a simple thing. Like, does it cost money to be nice? And yet most people, especially when they're successful are just not nice people. And it, it boggles my mind. Like, does it help you not to be nice in any way, shape or form? You could say no to that meeting in a nice way. You don't have to be a, sorry, a dick about it. Right. And so. To me, like the people that are just nice and pleasant to be around and make you feel good. You know, I heard a, a, an expression or a quote one time that I really, really loved. I don't know who said it, but someone said, when I speak to man when I speak to great managers, I feel like they're important. But when I speak to great leaders, I feel like I'm important. 
freaking love it, man. It's it's everything because a good leader empowers them or the people around them. A good a good leader elevates others. A good manager elevates themselves. Right. So that's my answer. Good, just good people. Niceness. Loud. Um. Okay. We're going. We're 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 going into another kind of topic that I want to talk about. Mental health. Um. <clears throat> COVID has not been easy for a lot of people who suffered from mental health. And we're still seeing kind of like the worrying effects. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows someone who's suffering from mental health. Um, you also wrote about mental health, not once and not twice. And you also supported some companies. I, I can't remember the name. There was this app. Oh, uh, this, uh, when you watch them. And Kai. The, uh, Kai, Kai, yes. Uh, well, you probably brought so much, uh, so much, uh, so, so much eyeballs, all you bought them, uh, grab them, all those, uh, posts about cool, cool, very cool company, by the way. Yeah. Um, what are your, what, what methods do you use to kind of make sure your, you know, your mental health is, is fixed, make sure your, your family is all right. And that really kind of, you know, what strategies do you use? What tactics? I mean, listen, you know, if we're going to get really heavy here, uh, you know, those that are watching um, or listening and don't know my story, my brother, my older brother, Ari, was tragically murdered in a terrorist attack four years ago. Um, and, you know, people talk about terror victims all the time, but what they don't talk about is family members of the terror victims. And I also don't like to throw around the word depression or anxiety or PTSD. I don't like to throw those words around easily, but you can't have a brother murdered and not have PTSD, right? So after Ari was murdered, like I had, you know, every mental health issue you can imagine. I was in bad, bad shape. Um, so, you know, I did I did what people do. You know, I, I went to therapy, took antidepressants. Um, you know, a lot of things helped. But um, without incriminating myself, I'll, I'll just say that I'm a very big believer, a very big believer in cannabis, like very big believer. And, and I'm also learning a lot about, I haven't tried, and again, I'm, just saying this because I don't want to get in trouble. I have not tried them, but I'm learning a lot about psychedelic treatments, right? Because I think it's it's a fascinating topic. Again, for for PTSD, for depression, for other things. Um, so I I personally, the more I learn about these things, the more I believe in them, and I think that the the stigma that's associated with these things is going to disappear in the coming years. We're seeing a lot of like mental health startups. You mentioned Kai previously. Um, I think there's no, it's not a coincidence that we're seeing such a rise in mental health tech, but uh, it's becoming a field because people, you know, nowadays, uh, they, they suffer more from mental health. Maybe it's, it's, you know, too much, you know, too much, um, phone exposure. I don't know. I'm not as, you know, dopamine, too much dopamine. I don't know. But, um, do you, do you, is there any practical thing for you during the day? Do you meditate? I, ca I can't imagine you meditate. No. No, I, I don't. I mean, I probably should. That's the truth. Like I, I um, just now I came back from visiting a family member and family member looked at me and goes, how many coffees do you have today? And I'm like, this is not coffee. I mean, I do have a lot of coffee, but this is natural, right? So it's, it, the, the thought of sitting and meditating is hard for me to even imagine, honestly. Uh, having said that, I'm, I'm, I am learning a lot about it and chances are it would be a very good thing for me. But no, I do not meditate. meditate. I don't do the whole you know, mindfulness and all that. I just, I don't do it. Um, I, I, I would say you listen, pray, you pray, I pray. Yes, I pray. But I, you know, I think at the end of the day, every, every person has what brings them happiness and my life, my work, my family, that's what brings me happiness. So I don't, yeah, no, I don't, I've never meditated. Truth is I've spoken to several people better recently who are big believers and they think that they, they want to teach me how to meditate and I might start, but for now I've never, I've never meditated in my life. Excellent. Um, okay. We're, we're, I have two last questions for you today. You've been super, um, been super awesome with your time. One is what are your favorite books? Wow. So it's actually an interesting story. So I, um, I, I once emailed Mark and Treason and I asked him for his favorite books and he CC Ben, Ben Horowitz, his partner and said, Ben, you know, what do you have to add to this list? And so they, so the two of them gave me a list of their favorite books and I have it actually as a keyboard shortcut. Uh, you know, when people say, cause people ask me all the time, like, what's your favorite restaurants? What's your favorite books? So I have a list. So here are the top, the top, uh, books that I've read and, and they're very, it's very not updated by the way. I, right next to me is uh, my bookshelf and it's about, um, 
50 business books right next to me. I could read them to you. But if you, if I had to choose my favorites, it's the hard thing about hard things. It's just like brilliance. Uh, Tools of Titans, Tribe of Mentors, right? I mean, those, those are unbelievable. Extreme Ownership, which is what Ben Horowitz recommended, which is unbelievable. Zero to One and Give and Take. Those are my top, top, top. Uh, but I mean, again, there's like, a, I don't know, there's so many. The, the Subtle Art of Not Giving, you know, there's there's a lot of them. There are a lot of books right next to me. Uh, but those are my top for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of gadgets, you're big, big on gadgets. You you recommend it. You told me not. I asked you a few weeks ago about an, if I should buy an iPad. You said there is no, there's no need for that. I bought the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> do you use it? Yeah, I use it. What do you do with uh, it? Uh, emails, writing. Why do you need an iPad for emails? Why don't you just do that on your phone? It's not, I don't, I, I don't like, you know, I don't like. You have your phone on you all the time. You don't have your iPad on you all the time. I don't. And I don't email all the time also. I mean, that's the difference they made you. I get an email, I respond right away. And yeah. if I, if I want to do things like social media or email, things like that, I do it on my phone. All my ink articles, I do it on my phone. Everything's on my phone. When I need something like to do this, right? Like a podcast or something that like, so then I open my computer. I have yet to, and I've owned every single iPad since the, since it was invented, and I have yet to figure out a use case for iPads. And with very few exceptions, I really do not believe that people need an iPad. I think many people force themselves to use their iPad because they already bought it, but I <laughs> really don't understand what the use case is. Most things you do on your phone, if you don't want to use your phone, use your MacBook, but why do you need an iPad? But that's just me. But yeah, I, I don't, I'm not an iPad fan, but definitely a gadget fan for sure. What, so my question is this, what is the next, like, gadget that you think is going to take over the space like obviously iphone is like the number one, the, the best thing set sliced bread but like what's the next thing like do you believe like i don't like apple watch i don't have it but i think it's not so convenient i don't know what your thoughts about it but do you think we're gonna we're gonna be you know there's gonna be a state where we don't have phones we maybe have this little thing that flies next to us and and kind of that reads no, everything. No, 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 no. So, so first of all, uh, I agree with you about Apple Watches. Again, I bought every Apple Watch since they've come, not every, but many, and I sold all of them. I never found it to be useful at all. But if you'd ask me what, what are the, what are the, the most exciting gadgets or devices that I think will be in the, in the coming years? Um, I think that the Apple iPhone department will be shut down in the next year or two, maybe three, and it'll be replaced by AR glasses, which Apple's working on now. Uh, and there's a reason that every single consumer electronics company, without exception, is building glasses right now. Every single one of them. Microsoft, Samsung, Google, Apple, they're all building glasses, right? So I don't think there's any industry expert who denies or debates the fact that in the very near future, we will be interacting with our devices with glasses, right? How they'll work, it'll be a hologram, I, that's already debatable. But the second Apple comes into an industry, we know what happens. It goes mainstream. And, and again, everyone knows Apple's releasing AR glasses. So... I think that, you know, AR and specifically wearables is going to be game changing in the coming years. And the second thing I would say is uh, drones. I think drones have not even scratched the surface yet. And I think people don't realize how insane drone technology is. I mean, you're talking about a device. People don't realize this. You're talking about a device that fits in the palm of your hand that can fly five miles, okay, 50 miles an hour, record in 4K or 5K, has 19 GPS satellites connected to it from outer space at any given moment has obstacle avoidance in all four directions. Like this is, this is a flying supercomputer. I think drones are going to change the world. And that to me is the most exciting thing. You know, some people go out, they play basketball. Some people, you know, go out and, you know, you know, play soccer, but you go out and you play drones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love drones. Dro drones are unbelievable. I, I, you know, I just bought a new car, um, and I, uh, I, took my I got a Polestar. It's, it's made by Volvo. It's electric. Nice. I'm, abso I'm absolutely in love with this car. But um, I took out my drone, and I, on the screen of my remote controller, I tapped on my car right in the picture. It then locked in on my car, and I just went driving, and the drone just wow. followed me in full speed from like from like I don't know eighty meters up. I was going like. 70 kilometers an hour. It's following me from the side, from the front, from the back. And it generated a movie that literally looks like it was a TV commercial. And I did it by myself. Like, it's crazy. That's insane. insane. That's insane. What about people? Well, I really love the, the, um, the episodes you did with group, with group 11. Not in the interviews. I'm talking, they were good as well. 
and talking about um yeah i did a you, cool video with dovey yeah and you, you know you visited you visited silicon valley and you were driving like the bentley and stuff yeah remember yeah, yeah. when yeah. are you doing something like that again you have to so it's funny you know that story happened i was in uh, i was in tel aviv one day and you know i always see i always take pictures of cars and i saw a bentley and i took a picture of it and i posted it and instantly i get a message from dovey francis who's uh BC in Silicon Valley from a, a firm called Group 11. And he he sends me a picture on Messenger of the B on his steering wheel. And I'm like, you drive a Bentley? He's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, it's like my dream car. What Bentley do you drive? He's like the Continental GT. I'm like, oh my freaking Lord. I'm like, that is my car. He goes, how about this? How about I bring you in for the week, give you the car, do a road show with all my companies, generate some video content about my companies and enjoy the Bentley. I'm like, where do I sign? So that's what we did. I flew in there. He gave me the Bentley. We drove, we flew around, you know, LA and San Francisco, whatever. We met all of his companies. We made videos. It was awesome. So when am I doing that again? I actually spoke to Dovey the other day, about three days ago. Uh, and we are talking about, you know, the 2.0. Amazing, man. Amazing. I want you to do an interview with uh, Olin Zed. I've done. I've done many. I know, but I want you to like it and in, the, in this natural happy there. You know, when like I, I've done two interviews with him at his cafe. Really? Where is that? I didn't see that. I'll send it to you. It's on my vlog. Yeah, I've done at least, maybe even more than two, but definitely two. Same. Do you think he is the number one VC out there? I don't think. I think that's a fact. I don't think anyone debates that. I mean, he is a one man VC that has returns that Sequoia and Benchmark would dream of. And when Oren Zev goes in on a deal, the top tier VCs in Silicon Valley jump right in because if Oren Zev invested, we're in. I mean, he is a legend. He is app and and again, dude, again, Oren Zev, the top VC as far as I'm concerned in the world, no ego, the nicest guy on the planet, no ego. That's what I'm talking about. People like that. That's that's the people that I love. No ego and no assistant. Nada. Does it all himself. Even you have assistant now. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I love Oren. He's such a great guy. Awesome, man. Hila Mer, thank you so much for taking the time. Gonna link out so many of the things you said uh hopefully this this video goes viral and if you're in it in it oh uh, is there anything else you want to kind of say dude honestly man i'm watching you hustle i'm being serious bro i'm watching you i'm really impressed with what you're doing like your name keeps popping up in meetings and whatever i was like yeah i'm like oh you know he's oh, he's doing our, our our pr this guy he's doing our pr i'm like dude you're everywhere man you and you, you do you have a team i have a team yes because I don't know how you're, I mean, you're really hustling. I'm very, very impressed. Keep doing what you're doing, my friend. Thanks, man. And, you know, you've been, you've been a help since, uh, since the first days. Uh, and always, always, a, always a mentor. Appreciate that. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's hang out soon. Been a while. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. All right, man. Have a good one. Bye-bye.